There's a group of fireworks hotshots who call themselves GFA Pyro. In this business, you need to take some risk. I get the whole stuff out. For fun. A little company with big plans to blast their way to the top. Man, this is insane. And conquer the Pyro world. This time on Pyro. <laughs> the boys launch a devastating show in a famous German garden. So much work, uh, it's really sad. Though. And fire things up under a Mexican volcano. Look at it erupt. But things get out of hand. Everybody here! Definitely in Mexico right now, we can tell. Yeah. It's got that Mexican feel to it. They know their way around Pyro. Okay, right? Yeah. Look at this. I like the street. All those old cobbles. But not so much about driving in Mexico. It's not a street for big American cars. We're yeah. gonna fall down the ditch. <laughs> now it looks like a dead end. I think so. <laughs> uh, speculative. Show me your skills, man. Eric and Hugh are finding every possible dead end in the mountainside town of Oxisco. It's pretty tight. There's a big hole on my side, so just keep going straight. It can be a long way out of here, you know that. No, you're gonna go up a step. The roads are bad, and so's their timing. The local volcano has been active lately, spewing super hot rocks and ash. Kids. We're just a bunch of gringos <laughs> make our way back. When the gringos from Canada finally figure out how to get down to the plaza in front of City Hall, an old friend is waiting. Jorge! Jorge yeah. Marquez is one of Mexico's top pyrotechnicians. <laughs> Happy to be here. Beautiful. See? Yeah, it's nice. Hi, nice. Nice to meet you. Last year, GFA helped Jorge fire a wild show from the roof of an ancient church on Independence Day. Shall we have a, have a look? Let's Ready? go. A year later, Eric and Ugg are here to help Jorge launch another huge show from Mexico's Big Day. Because we don't have these kind of things in Canada much, you know? We sing the national anthem before a hockey game. <laughs> We need to bring the truck on the back. On the back there. Back we street. need to close the street. Yeah. It's impossible to get in. You will see, it's crazy. It's wow. This year's show is being launched from three adjacent rooftops above City Hall. Wow. Over the years, GFA has fired from some pretty strange places, but this is one of the most bizarre. It's a nice surface. I had to look down here and it's this whole bunch of inmates. This is like the municipal jail here. They're just hanging out and when they seemed surprised to see some people up here and haven't seen people in a while. <laughs> yeah, or he just noticed the problem there because there's a terrace there with a the restaurant. Have a look. Oh yeah, they're right next to us. Yes. That's pretty close, eh? That's new. Wasn't there when you came to visit? It wasn't there. No, eh? it was nothing. It was empty. Mm. With the walls of bamboo and all the chairs we made of wood, and especially the roof that is made of uh, dry palm tree palms. And in the plan of his show, he's using a lot of crisscrossing effects, so he's angled outwards. They could receive quite a bit of fallout from the effects. Now he's got a little bit of a, um, a little problem to solve there. Jorge has no time to fix that problem now. The pyro truck is here. The pain will begin now. Ah, it's squeezing through. The team has to move quickly as daylight is fading and the show is tomorrow night. Independence Day is the biggest event on the pyro calendar. It's a challenge for me to keep the client happy because I always want to see something different. I want to see something new. 
And if you are not able to give it to them, for sure they will switch to a different company. Jorge's taking no chances. He's packed a powder keg of pyro into his eight-minute show. This is gonna take a while. Mm -hmm. What we would do, we'd probably just bring in a crane and crane everything up. But uh, it's just part of the Mexican experience. Maybe we'll see the next rope come down and some guy is shimmying down the rope with a striped shirt on and numbers on his back. The truckload of fireworks is finally unloaded. Tomorrow, they set it all up on the roof. And daylight's going to reveal some unexpected headaches. The Independence Day Festival begins. The parade is awesome. It's all school kids. Super disciplined, super patriotic. It's different. The setup for tonight's big show is different too. So uh, we have a shell position that strangely is on the roof of a school, which we did never do at home. No particular barriers, you know, or anything. I mean, you could actually drop a shell right down on a kid's head. But I'm here to work uh, the Mexican way, and this is it. A jail, a schoolyard, and a grass-roofed patio. Jorge's plan has got to dodge some tricky obstacles. Okay, so we'll build it like this, and depending once it's finished, we'll verify the angles with the, the next-door neighbor. So. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a sprawling firing site. The pyro will launch from three adjacent rooftops. A mix of one-shots and fixed effects will fire from the edge, right above the crowd. While further back, a battery of mortars will lob big aerial shells over the jail and the schoolyard. Yeah, we've been assigned to uh, do the one-shots. It's a little more... Uh tedious, a little more complicated, because I don't know, yeah. Pretty much one of each on each position. Okay. Well, we're sorting the uh, the product because it was packed by effect and not by position. What a mess. Spaghetti. So now, right now we're taking each type of effect and sorting it in uh, boxes that are assigned to uh, the specific position. It's going to be easier to set up. So these are all small effects, yes. comets, mines, cakes. It's got to be a precision shoot. But the cardboard encased pyro isn't inspiring confidence. Uh, and this one here has no igniter. So I was looking in the box and I was finding all these little caps at the bottom of the box. I could lose the, the inside. You could, you could actually hear them inside. So if the cap falls out, the product will fall out. We have to be a little bit more careful while we're handling them. As Oog assembles a rack of volatile bombs, he gets some unexpected company. There's uh, some sort of uh, electrician working behind me. And it's funny because here in, uh, in Mexico, life goes on even though there's full of explosives on the, the rooftop and you're setting up fireworks. They don't see things as dangerous as we do. You need some sort of safety when you're working with uh, explosives. Another thing they don't do back home in Canada is position fireworks so that sparks will shower the audience. I mean, it's up close for sure. It'll be exciting for the spectators. Yeah. I mean, in Montreal, it would have closed the whole city. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> no, there's no way this would happen. Being a pyro, I kind of like the proximity, so it's exciting. At the same time, if something goes wrong, it could go really wrong, you know. Look at the volcano, I look at it erupt. Noon and Popocatepetl looks like it's stoking up for its own big show. I've never seen a volcano that close, really. I've never, never been that close to one, so it is a little unnerving. <laughs> Jorge's crew starts putting up a giant sign loaded with pyro. There's a lot of effects, and that's what makes a good show. The front edge of the roof is getting jam-packed with effects. Like wheels, got a set piece, one shots, candles, cakes, to accompany the shells that'll be right in the back. 
There's going to be a lot of fallout all over the place. And it's shooting over the street there and see how the people react to it. They like to live a little bit more on the edge, I guess. <laughs> Have that excitement factor a little bit stronger by being closer to the fireworks. They want to be involved as much as they can. If they get some sparks, they will be happy. They are part of it, live in the moment. Contrary to in Canada, I mean, you get one tiny little spark come too close to the crowd and they'll want you to cancel the show. When we see a fireworks far away in some other town, they say, oh yeah, yeah, it's too far away. It looks like a regular Canadian show. <laughs> but all these hand-built effects Yo creo que sí. Pues te preguntaba. are taking a long time to assemble. What's done? Position... Position 3 still has uh, some work to do. Okay. Position 2 is not done at all. By midday, Jorge is getting worried they may run out of time. There's only one guy that really knows how to read the, oh, okay. the plans. It should be a little faster, but... Uh, we need to be ready for tonight, and at the pace we're going, we'll never make it. The Mexican way, they work slow. And if the volcano's not enough, Nature ushers in another threat. Rain clouds are moving in. Oh, lightning. Yeah, right here. Rain and fireworks don't mix. Storm is coming. I don't know how we're going to make it. All their pyro could get doused before it's even lit. This is not good. The Pyros are trying to set up a fireworks show in Oxisco, Mexico. But nature seems to have other plans. Look at the volcano, I look at it erupt. First, the smoking volcano. And now, a rainstorm. Oh, lightning. Yeah, yeah. right here. This is not good. Eric, Hugh, and Jorge are worried their Independence Day show may turn into a soggy dud. It's top for now, but if you look at the clouds over there, you need to make sure everything's protected. If the rain doesn't get them, the workload might. Yeah. Me, Eric, and Jorge are the only one working right now. I have no clue where they are. Jorge's team has disappeared. Now it's just the three of them to finish the setup. Starting to understand why he needed us here. For me, it's very nice to have these guys here because uh, it's only myself. I know they can fix any problem they can find on the setup. We clear that? It's clear. Jorge has discovered that a structure on the roof is blocking a rack of one shots. Maybe you could put them all up here. It's got to be moved right on the edge <laughs> some designers follow their plan to the letter put it up it's up to you yeah maybe one Jorge is happy to make changes on the fly that's gonna be so beautiful <laughs> just that little touch and he has another issue it's pretty close huh yeah the nearby restaurant yeah, they should take some precautions because that's like having a you know Oh, yeah. Gasoline. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The thatched roof patio is an obvious fire hazard. Time to meet the owner. And make an emergency plan. Eric, uh, you think a uh, extinguisher will work in any case? Powder. Powder. Yeah, maybe water, I think. Uh, Good, the garden hose with a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. He had a water hose on standby if ever something would catch. It's always hard to say with the wind. Oh, well, hopefully, I, I, I feel okay. good, and now he knows. Exactly yes, exactly. What's going to be on. conscious That's of the danger wise. and be able to react and be ready for it. As showtime approaches, Jorge's feeling the pressure. It's a mixture of nerves, and emotion, and stress. It's one of the shows that I get really, really nervous. 
That's just normal. Yeah. If you say not nervous, there's something wrong. Yeah, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, you're lying. <laughs> Up on the roof with all the pyro, Yug and Jorge's assistant power up the slave firing board. The fireworks uh, were shot in slave mode, which means that your fireworks board is hooked up to a transceiver, which is a little antenna that communicates with the, the main firing board on the ground level. Okay, system is on if you want to test. All right, let's see if this baby is working. If the system is working, the modules will show up as green squares on Jorge's laptop. Red squares are bad news. Can you uh, test uh, locally the first five modules to see if uh, they are responding? Or... Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I'm in a bit gray right now. Okay, so we need to check this, uh, the lines from the shelf. It seems to be shorting out. Five modules aren't picking up. So Eric on the roof is going to test it again locally to see if the problem is in the wiring on the roof or the link between us and him. Nothing has moved. No, it's in. Any kind of error when you're testing your show, I mean, your just head starts spinning and thinking of the different reasons why this error shows up. It's communicating. It says low, though. The signal is very low. Eric to uh, Jorge. Uh, everything uh, tests uh, locally without any problem. But it says wireless low on the screen. That uh, it's connected, but it says it has a low signal. It says wireless low. Wireless low. Where? Up there. On his screen. Wireless low. The wireless uh, table is on the edge of the building. It's okay. Uh, Ramses is going. Connections on the transceiver check out fine. Eric wonders about something else that may be causing the wireless problem. There's an interview happening right behind us. The TV station's doing some kind of interview and they have wireless mics. And it looks like they may be interfering with our system. So we'll know definitely if it's back to the strong signal. Right now, for the past uh, minute, uh, the signal is uh, okay. I have no uh, wireless low on the screen. It's only wireless slave. The TV crew is done, and the signal is back. Finally, it's all systems go. Did he do anything up there? Nothing. Just uh, test. I think uh, all we can do now is uh, keep uh, checking to make sure the communication stays on and uh, hope for the best. All right. Eric heads over to the church tower. He's going to monitor all the one shots from here. Watch some fireworks up close. It's like the tower of death. Man, this is cool, no historical building. Wow, this is awesome. Only in Mexico, because definitely this is the path of the, the fireworks can be zipping right by me, so. Eric and Oog are in their positions. Viva Mexico! The crowd is fired up for the show. Viva Mexico! Woohoo! Ten seconds! And Jorge faces the moment of truth. Hanover, Germany is a cultural treasure. But tomorrow night, Morning, fellas. Hey, man. these guys want to blow things up. Pyro style. Englishman ready to destroy a bar. <laughs> Philippe and Benoit, GFA's resident artist, are joining forces with a team of British pyros to mount the assault. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm wondering what surprise you're uh, keeping oh, us. Well, we got lots of work for you this morning. I know. Don't you worry. Good. <laughs> Commanding the troops is Andrew Wiggins. The first thing we'll do is get all the racks out. He's one of the top pyrotechnicians in Europe. And then we'll concentrate on the single shots. He's an awesome designer. He's a super sweet guy. He's, he's fun to work with. 
It's Andrews Knight in a high-stakes shootout against five other countries. The competition here in Hanover is one of the oldest in the world, well respected throughout the fireworks community. We've been working on this show for the past 12 months. It obviously means a great deal to us. To be there, you have to be prepared for, uh, for a big battle. But pyro battles can leave casualties. Last summer in Montreal, Benoit was badly burned when a shell blew up unexpectedly. The only thing I remember is maybe a, a sound, a bang, nothing more. A shell blow in his face. For sure it was violent. It's just a good reminder. This job can be deadly. Benoit suffered severe burns to his arms and torso, as well as a punctured eardrum. Was I lucky? I will say yes, but it was not my time. Benoit, man, he is in life and it's a miracle. Five weeks after the accident, I went back to the warehouse and see if I can touch again her products. After six months, I'm back and I feel I can continue on this business. For sure. And today, he's setting up one of the highest profile shows in Europe. Everybody emptying trucks, laying the, all the guns on the field. It's a huge show, eh? It's a strange place for launching pyro. It was in the middle of a big garden, so it's, it's a beautiful place to be. This is the historic Herrenhausen Gardens, a park that goes back 300 years. The gardens, as you can see, are absolutely beautiful. We have to be extremely careful that we don't destroy anything here. I would imagine the head gardener hates the pyros. <laughs> I'm the garden master. We make a fireworks competition here in the garden since uh, 22 years. The world famous fireworkers uh, are here and it's a little bit crazy because sometimes have ideas uh, that's not good for the garden. They have uh, burned down my, my hedges. It happens. Philippe just got back from the Congo where his show full of big shells sparked a wildfire. But Andrew is going for a more refined show. You have to be really creative here. You can't just turn up and fire lots and lots of shells and make it a really big and loud show. Very subtle effects are going to be really effective here. It will take two days, three kilometers of wire, and nearly 5,000 effects to cover a site this big. Andrew's plan of attack. Monster aerial shells at the back of the gardens. Smaller bombs on the grass behind the pools. Spinning pyro wheels in the middle. Ground effects up front near the audience. And the showstopper. An enormous waterfall of fire rising in the air. It is all about making the show absolutely as he designed it. So if something's supposed to be at 45 and 60 degrees, 43 and 62 will not do. Attention to detail wins competitions. It has to be exactly right. Andrew is a guy that has all the little pieces of the puzzle. He controls everything in his mind. Yeah. We're all like the soldiers, and he's at the head of the, of the empire. The British troops are an eclectic team of pyro fanatics. My daytime job is chopping up chickens. I work for the family business, retail, selling greeting cards. I was a submariner for nine years, Royal Navy, and I've always liked blowing things up, basically. Pumpkins are afraid of me. We sacrifice ourselves on the altar of the pyro. Uh, Andrew, how far in the grass you want the four inch? Three's at the front, we put the fives right at the back, and the four's right in the middle. I like it. But Philippe doesn't like what he finds. Uh, we thought it would be like German, uh, really nice, really clean, but it's all uneven rack, different length. With pieces of wood that are almost all destroyed. There's tiny nails. It's a pain in the ass. 
And uh, a monkey can do that. With, uh, no, no, I'm not a monkey, man. No, I, can't, I could do that. <laughs> You're a strong monkey. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no room for monkey business. If you get loose, it's easy to get nothing. That's the reaction. Because the same reaction will tilt towards public. And pyro rule number one, never aim your bombs at the audience. Once the guns are loaded with explosives, there's no room for mistakes. This fuse burns at 50 meters a second. A school was doing its own display. They loaded the shell like that. The headmaster lit the fuse and thinking he'd got ages because it's really long, looked down the tube and it fired almost instantly, blew his head off. And that's why shells are banned in the UK for the general public, because they don't know what they're doing. This is what we're lighting. But professional pyro still finds its way into the wrong hands. Like these American teens who get way too close to a mortar. There you go, Ernie. That's really a fast fuse. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love it, right? Actually, we need a we need a flame. <laughs> If they'd been a few inches closer to the mortar, they could have been killed. Back in Hanover, the pyros have got their work cut out for them. There's a huge stash of small, single-shot fireworks and ground effects to be mounted on custom trays. Okay. It's tedious work. We expected to do all this shitty job. <clears throat> After more than an hour. Hey! hey Finish one! Hey, give him a prize. Your prize is that you can do another one. Yeah, I know I knew that. <laughs> Phil does the math and it's not looking good. It's 16 bucks. Well, 50 hours of uh, work. He shows tomorrow. Hey, Andrew. Yeah? Are you too a little concerned about making, like, 80 racks before tomorrow? Come on. Let me show you something. It's already done. Already done? Why no, you, you don't have to do it. <laughs> I just wanted to make you sweat a little. Now I understand why Andrew was all relaxed. <laughs> and they're all laughing at us. <laughs> of course. You're the new guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. He may be a joker, but Andrew's planning a seriously elaborate show for this prestigious contest. Andrew has a crazy mind. Flames, gerbs, quick shot, fountains, stage mind. Very impressive. If everything goes according to uh, Andrew's plan, it's going to be brilliant. He's increasing chance of winning by increasing his chance of having a mistake, right? It's a, it's a gamble. The more complex, the more chances for screwing up. And a lot of effects means another problem. Flares and smoke grenades and gerbs, they produce lots of smoke. Physics, fate, and even Mother Nature can derail the best laid plans. Oh, he's ruling it nice big time. For all their prep, they're gonna need a little luck to pull off this show. Sebi. A fancy German garden seems a crazy place for an international fireworks festival. But yeah. Canadians Philippe <laughs> and Benoit are helping British pyros fill it to the brim with explosives. We did a good job, man, on this. I think so, man. Actually, the English can do some good stuff. I thought it was only fish and chip. Andrew Wiggins is on the march, planting complex trays of ammo all over the park. Yeah, we're carrying about a week's worth of labor on our backs now, so we, it better all work. Andrew uh, Wiggins is a madman. I think he went crazy on this show. I never saw so many effects on the same show. It was unbelievable. He just keeps pulling up other stuff and more and more and more. And this is getting over the limit, I think. Pete, are you on Shell 3 nearly ready for some e-match testing? 
Firing thousands of effects in such a complex show requires a maze of circuits and raises the odds of screwing up one of the biggest pyro events in Europe. Can I do that? Okay, module six, channel nine is down, everything else is good. They have to route nearly 2,000 firing cues through 88 modules. And a few bad connections can wreck the whole thing. There's nothing there or it's not connected. Nine's completely missing, mate. Go find it. It will be a three inch sink blinker upright. Mm, one of these. The system fell or there's some mismatch. It's gonna look like a wolf. But Andrew keeps upping the ante, adding even more complicated effects. What we're making here are some uh, horizontal wheels, commonly known as dancing ladies. They spin on a central spindle, like that. These are drivers, and they will give them the power to spin around. These are designed to burn upside down, and silver sparks come out the bottom. When it spins around, these uh, spin around with it and they create what looks like a, the illusion of a skirt. I think that's how they got the nickname, Dancing Ladies. These are green and purple contra-rotating wheels. One's a green. One side will spin one direction, the other side will spin in the other. How many of those yet? Three. Let's lift it up and see how it spins. This wheel is a, a traditional English set piece called a chromatrope wheel. Yes. Lift it in there. It's probably about 40 years old, this piece. So it's, it's something that uh, might be unique to us, I hope. We have to make sure that the bearings turn very freely. There's no obstructions. So that's the main area of concern. So it's a tricky effect. They're really nice when they work, but they, they really often don't work. And fail. <laughs> it's a gamble. I think they might run into each other still. They're close, yeah. yeah. Wheels, dancing lady, fountains, jerk, stroke. I really wish this would work. He's taking a lot of chances. But Andrew's not done yet. His biggest effect? The waterfall, which should look fantastic, but it's going to be a mega arse to set up and get right. The enormous waterfall will stretch longer than a football field with more than 600 dangling fountains of fire. And we're going to connect it to a scissor lift in the middle, start it behind the trees, and then raise up above the trees. But Andrew finds out the rented lift only goes half the height he needs it to go. When he's going to lift the, the waterfall, we won't see it because it will go behind the trees all the way up. The trees are really thick and uh, they're in the way. Because that's the only place uh, where we can put the waterfall. I think Andrew was disappointed about it. Honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a shame. Okay, so we've changed this uh, slightly from what we originally planned. Uh, we've decided to fix it in position before and get it as high as we can. So because, uh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be hidden behind the trees? It'll tree. be hidden a little bit, so we're gonna, we'll try and uh, raise it a bit with some posts at the end. We'll knock this in when Phil comes back to the sledge. <laughs> okay, all the tension. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> you tell me when, eh? Now, yeah. Okay. The effect won't look as good as uh, Andrew wanted to be. It won't be rising, but uh, we'll still see the effect, even though it'll be a static effect. <laughs> now we just arm the system and it's ready for showtime. By evening, 10,000 seasoned fireworks fans arrive. It's a summer highlight, and they expect a better show every year. Das war dies hier, das passt mir jetzt zu mir, das ist meine Farbe. Genau. Before the show, me and Philip have the feeling that something bad will happen. Hopefully you want to have a little win. People don't realize that you cannot rehearse the fireworks. You have to deal with 
weather, but that's part of the game. We had a slight breeze, uh, everything was going well. See? And suddenly it just stopped. The humidity got really dense and heavy and with no wind. You're f***ed. It's nearly showtime in Hanover. The English team is battling to get everything done. I'm going to put the module on top and we're going to put everything to it. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an extremely complicated setup, so that's always a gamble. Probably about five to, uh, five to firing. A little nervous, a little anxiety, you know, before the show. 10,000 spectators are waiting. Currently we are 100% green, all 1,730 channels are in and correct. We've done everything we can do. Over 5,000 effects. and Gardens is now a powder keg, packed with pyro. Opening salvo fires perfectly. But the fireworks make smoke, so if you don't move the smoke, the next firework, you won't see it. See the dome of smoke we have? It's too much. Andrew Wiggins' barrage of one shots is kicking up a smoke screen. The bad thing is we cannot see all the show. The dancing ladies only thicken the haze. Unfortunately, we could not see it. It was uh, stuck in smoke. To make matters worse, two of the three chromatrope wheels are stuck. The arm of the wheel fell to spin. It's tricky to use those wheels. The fireworks just push the wheel, but there's such a big structure and just sometimes it's not strong enough, sometimes the axe is not good, so it just bumped into something else. By the time Andrew's waterfall rains fire, it's mostly hidden by trees and smoke. The waterfall just killed it. Andrew's dreams of winning are going up in smoke. So much work uh, that we can yeah. not see it. It's really sad. Huh? Even a powerful finale can't burn through the murky gloom. With a, a nice win, that was probably uh, the best show of the competition. With no win, he just uh, fired himself in the foot. Andrew, thanks for help. Very good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really good. Sorry for the smoke, but... Oh, couldn't skip anything. I am very disappointed for him. I've never seen that much smoke sitting around. See the way it's drawing off that fountain, there's so much moisture in the air, it's a uh, bad recipe for smoke. I personally feel for Andy. He still did all the work and it was still beautiful, but it's been spoiled by an outside force. Poor guy, man. Oh, so much work behind this. So much work. Andrew's rivals will compete on other nights. 
but he already knows there's no hope of a medal this time. He lost the gamble on that one. It's a shame. In Pyro, even the most perfectly planned shows can get sideswiped by forces beyond anyone's control. Next time on Pyros. A rookie faces his trial by fire. We have a real problem. On a Quebec City rooftop. It's not a potato, it's f***ing explosive, you know? Dirty Shire! And Philippe is forced to team up with an old enemy on the fields of England. It's my uh, former uh, partner in Pyro. <laughs>